everybody, and welcome to the live stream. I'm Jesse Showalter. You are here on the YouTube channel, and today we're going to be designing and prototyping a simple login flow inside of Adobe XD. Got people jumping in the live chat already. Yeldos is here. Excellence, Francisco, Joe, uh, Sachin, and lots of fun people. Tell me where you're coming from. Where are you in the world on this fine Saturday? Um, and uh, oh, cool. Brian says just starting to work on a project like this. Excellent. This could be for you. Maybe. Possibly. It's going to be really exciting stuff. Um, like I said, we are live streaming right now. So feel free to chat, ask questions. I try to answer them as much as possible. Uh, while I'm doing the design work. And then for the last 10 minutes of the stream, we're gonna be doing some portfolio reviews. I put in a message out on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and with that being said, I already got four submissions. And so that closes submissions. I took the first four and just tried to honor who first come first serve. But tell me where you're coming from in the world and maybe your favorite emoji kind of thing, something like that. I'm coming from Texas and my favorite emoji is the little the little praise hand emojis. That's me. Um, all right, Sachin is from India. Uh, we got Brian from Toronto, Canada. Uh, Excellent says shalom to all. Hey, peace be with you as well, my friend. Uh, everybody's doing pretty good. Greetings from Chile, right on. Okay, okay. Kazakhstan, all over the world. Very cool. Well, like I said, today we are building that uh, that login flow. It's just a concept project. Um, but what we're going to be addressing today a little bit is not only UI design, some basic techniques inside of Adobe XD, but really you also have to think there's some slight UX design principles we're going to be talking about today as well as prototyping. And if we have time, if we get done really quick, we might even build out an initial home screen for our project, which, oh man, you're gonna be really excited. It's a donut project because I like me a donut in the morning. Okay, um, uh, so Finya says, what do I think about no code tools? Love them, did a whole video about them, doing more videos about them and using tons of them because I think they're super duper cool. People come from in, uh, India and Bangladesh and uh, Hamburg, Germany and St. Petersburg, Russia, like all over the place. Very, very cool. The Dominican Republic. Hey, thanks everybody for joining. We're gonna be building out this little donut themed kind of uh, login flow. I don't, I don't know why there would be a donut application where you could order donuts, but you know what? Why not? I'm just, <laughs> that's because I'm literally just in the mood for donuts. Okay, here we go. Uh, so here's what we have on our starting screen. Um, if you want the starting file, you could consider becoming a member. There's a, the first comment down in the comment section uh, has a little link inside of it. And if you want to become a member, support the channel, you get starting files, completed files, you get behind the scenes footage, you get access to members only posts, all that stuff's there. You can hit over in the community tab, or you can just hit that little link down below, sign up. You also get cool emojis that you can use in the live chat. So people know you are a member. Um, that's the thing. If not, no problem. Coolio, let's get going. This is an Adobe XD file. And if you want to use something else, feel free. I just, I'm digging Adobe XD right now. So I have some icons here. I have a bunch of donut assets. I'm using Sophia Pro and I have a background color that I've already created. If I head over to my assets panel, you can see that I have uh, some colors for my palette already picked out and I've already created a character style so I can reuse it over and over if I want to. What is a login flow? What even is a login flow? Well, a login flow is uh, in the simplest kind of explanation. It's the way that the user is going to log into your application. And there's two types of users that would hit a login screen. It's either people that need to sign up or people that need to log in. This is sometimes called your launch screen, not a splash screen, but your launch screen. Um, this is where you want to give people the opportunity to head down those pathways. If we were to build a little user journey, it would say this type of user needs to log in, this type of needs, user needs to sign up. So we need to create those screens for them. Um, let's take these icons and let's just move them, ooh, if I can get a hold of them, off of our artboard. And let's stick with this Hello John. I, let's do a little vote right now in the chat. What donut is your favorite here on the screen? We got lots of different ones. We got some pink ones, green ones, blue ones. Um, let me know what your favorite one is and maybe I'll swap it out. But for now, I'm gonna grab this pink donut and let's do some fun design, okay? Um, real, real quick before we like get into the UX and prototyping kind of thing. I want to just I want to break some some molds already. I want to create something dynamic and interesting on the main screen. You can do that through a bunch of different ways. Dynamics are an interesting thing in design. One way is size, obviously. And so we've created this donut. We've bumped up the size. That makes it a little bit more dynamic. Another thing might be repetition, some of those basic design principles. But I'm also going to break the plane and I'm going to lead it off of the screen 
and make it a little bit more dynamic. So this is gonna be real fun too because I'm thinking in my prototype, we might also be able to use this off the screen donut. Maybe we'll animate it and do some stuff with it. But right away, it looks a little bit more dynamic, a poster like, oh, this is not just contained here in the screen. There's something more to it, which is always a little bit more interesting in my opinion. Um, Adegoki, which I probably murdered that name, says likes the pink one. Everyone loves the pink donut, so it looks like I picked the right one. Okay, cool. I think it's probably that contrast between the purple and the pink. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Okay, so uh, we have our, our kind of like initial statement, like hello to the user. Um, and that might work if they're signed in. It might not. It might just say hello. Okay, so we'll think about that later. But let's create our two simple pathways, our two simple user journeys for the type of user that might come to our, our site here or to our application. So I'm gonna hit R for rectangle. I'm gonna stretch out a button. And we're gonna not only be talking about the different user journeys right now, but we're gonna be talking about how to establish a primary and a secondary kind of like action, okay? So we have, uh, let's create a button here, all right? Uh, I'm gonna take some text, I'm gonna put it right here. Let's do something like a sign up. Um, woo, sign up, good. And we'll take that, and we'll just center that in our button. And then really quickly, let's just, so we can like check it out, because we might have to fiddle with these in a little bit, but let's also do sign in. Let's make sure all of this is center aligned text and align these in the button. So here's the problem that we're seeing right now. And I'm gonna really quickly lock this donut so I, could, so I stop selecting it. Here's the problem we're finding. Sign up and sign in have the exact same weight. This is a no-no. There, there has to be a primary action for a user to take here. So we're thinking, who comes here more often? Probably the person who, who has the primary kind of like a, um, the primary like user experience. Who, who, who comes here more often? the person who's downloaded the app and comes back to the app or the person who just comes here once. Well, that's only one time that you get here for the first time. Every other time you're a repeat offender, right? You've come back again and again and again, you need to sign in. So I would think that the sign in is actually the primary like action that we want users to take here because they've already been here. Therefore, we want to establish a style for sign up. First off, let's, let's, do, let's fix a few things up. Let's make this button a little bit bigger. Okay, or the text inside. And then let's actually, I'm gonna grab our, our button. Let's just shrink the size of the button down just a little teeny tiny bit. And then let's do this. Let's make it a border button, white, and let's take the size of our border up and let's make our text white, shall we? Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab this and group it together. You can see in our, our panel here. And we're gonna call this button and I'm gonna make a component command or control K. Now it's a component, I can create multiple instances of my component. But we have the default state, right? Let's create another state in our component state. Let's do a new state here. We'll call this filled and we'll call it filled white. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that means we, in our filled white state, we want to fill it with white, you, you guessed it. We wanna take our sign up text and we wanna make it purple, okay? Well, that's pretty good, that's filled white. Why don't we make another state really quick because I have a feeling we're gonna do, need this. Let's do another state based off of our filled white and call this filled purple, okay? So now our filled purple state, of course, is going to get filled with, you guessed it, purple. We're gonna take the border off and then we're gonna take our text and move it to white. Sound good? Sounds pretty good to me. Now we have one button that has multiple states. This is actually the start to your design system if you were gonna build one of them things out. So now we can take our button and we could just duplicate and bring another instance of it down here. Let's pick the filled white state. Oh, that's so easy once you get it all set up like that. And we don't want this to be sign up. We want this one to be sign in. Oh, look how beautiful and nice that is. And then why don't we really quickly, we'll take our text and we will zoom in right here. And why don't we do the thing you always need, which is, did you uh, forgot, did you forgot your password? Okay, we always wanna make some sort of state for people who have forgotten their password. And we don't want that forgot password to overwhelm. See how it's competing right now? So we wanna make this a tertiary action. And we do that, we can use some of the things like size. Um, and maybe if you wanted to, you can even do a little bit of opacity there so that it blends in. So it's not the thing that stands out the most. Now we have a nice little login screen there. 
Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's answer a few questions really quickly. Does the artboard have a gradient on it? It actually does have a slight gradient on it. Really good eyeballs there. Who asked that question? Excellence Adigun, which I messed that name up. I'm just gonna call you Excellence because that was an excellent question. If I click inside, you can see the color is actually, the background of the artboard is purple. And then what I've actually done is I've just applied a slight gradient over it with an opacity and a little bit of a blending layer, a color burn. So that way, any color that I make the background, check this out, <clears throat> I can get a little bit of gradient on it, right? That's just a little trick. You don't have to do that, but that's what I like to do. So uh, there is our first screen. Now, um, we wanna create all of the different steps for these three possible actions, sign up, sign in, and forgot password. So this is our starting artboard. Let's create a new artboard here and let's call this sign in let's do our sign in <clears throat> uh, our sign in button first all right and uh, here's what we're gonna do because we know we're gonna prototype we have the same elements on the page so far don't we we're probably gonna want to bring in some other elements as well so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to shrink our donut down just a little bit I'm gonna bring out my trusty pen tool here and let's do our pen tool something like this I'm just gonna start creating a box by going around the edges of our artboard. I'm gonna use shift and shift will actually make it hold uh, straight lines. It'll make sure the lines stay straight. And I'm gonna do kind of a fun little wavy kind of thing inside of here. Cool. And we don't want a border, but we do want to fill it with white. Okay, and I'm gonna use command or control left bracket to bring it behind everything. And now our donut is kind of floating there. So that's kind of cool. I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna move that, where did that background thing go? Where did it go? Our path, here we go. Uh, we want it to be above the color and we just wanna bring it down. I, I just didn't like the little, the little peak that it was making there. So maybe we just affect that peak by taking that Bezier curve, something like that, something like that. That's pretty cool, just a little bit of swoopiness, not, nothing too serious. Okay, but what we wanna do now is we're gonna create our, our sign-in form. So uh, what we could do is probably just get rid of these or we could move these off the screen, doesn't really matter. Let's just get rid of them for now. We'll figure out the prototyping of that later. If you're not used to prototyping, it'll all make sense. It's gonna come together, I promise. We're gonna say, we're gonna take our text here and we're gonna zoom in and we need two fields, at least two fields, most likely an email and a password. And we probably wanna have actually a button. So let's bring our button back here. Boom, let's put that there and let's do the filled purple. There we go. We're gonna to wanna to make sure this says sign in ooh, without the capital N, something like that, okay? So far, so good. Let's bring our text down. I'm just gonna zoom in and bring some text down and I'm gonna change it to our color, our purple color like that. And why don't we build a little input field and we can create reusable components out of our input field. Hope everyone's doing all right out there. Let's do email first. Again, let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay, and then if we haven't done this yet, but we really should, we should be using some sort of layout or grid, right? So we're gonna turn on the layout or grid and we should be lining everything up to these grids. Make it nice and neat and if you want to mess with the buttons and make those full width of the grid or you know something similar to it you can do that as well so we could just stretch this guy out if we want to we can make that full width and we'd want to go back and fix the button on the previous screen obviously i'm doing this really really fast because i have limited time with you guys so let's take that down to about an 18 point text and i tell you what why don't we do a line underneath it let me know also if you agree with the layout like the layout grids or columns like this, or if you like a square pixel grid, like maybe an eight point grid or something like that. I'm gonna make that purple and I'm gonna bring some text down in here. I'm gonna say like uh, John Doe at gmail.com. All right, so far so good. And then this is where I think our, probably our icons are gonna come into play. Probably password, right? And hey, maybe even these guys. Let's bring our little arrow down. So if we wanna go back, we can. And let's bring our icons, which if you're wondering where I got my icons, the place I got my icons is a little application I use called Icon Jar. And uh, it just has like a bunch of preset icons that have similar weights, which is really important consistency inside of UI design. 
Let's see, Madden Barrel says, yeah, I agree with Brian. Maybe we can just write welcome if we want text there. Absolutely, yeah, you could replace that. It doesn't have to be so specific with a name. Absolutely, do what you think is right. I'm gonna take both these icons. I'm gonna size them down just a little bit. Okay, now you wanna be careful when you do that because in XD, it's gonna keep the weight of the border there. So maybe we wanna turn that to a one pixel border and it kind of lightens everything up just a little bit, okay? Now I'm gonna take my, uh, ooh, what's the key for that? I always forget. What is the hotkey to take the layout off really fast? Let's look. Layout show, layout grid. Ah, command shift and apostrophe to turn it on and off really quickly. I always forget that. Now, what happened to our icon? I don't know. There it is. I think we want to have a little bit of contrast between these elements. So I'm gonna use our off black color for the name and I'm gonna take the rest of these elements, the line, the icon, and that I'm just gonna shrink it down a little bit. And now this is where we really need to get nitty gritty and play with spacing, okay? So I'm just gonna space these things, even spacing there. Let's make sure that these are, excuse me, lined up horizontally. And we have some similar spacing. And that could be, that could be an input field, okay? Just a style. There's other styles of input fields you could do. It's up to you. I'm gonna group that together. I'm gonna make a component out of it. First, I'm gonna call this input, okay? Um, and I'm gonna do another one down below. Really cool. I'm gonna take this key away. And let's call this password, okay? I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna paste my key and we're gonna have to drop it down to a similar opacity, something like that. So let's just bring that up in place, can do, bingo, like that. And now we have two input fields. Let's bring this up and we're gonna have to replace this. I know there is a way to type the password dot, but I forget it. So <laughs> I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna use my lips tool and I'm going to do some ellipses there in its place. There is a way though, I just completely forget to type it on the keyboard. If anybody knows it, let me know just for my own, my own uh, knowledge moving forward. I just did a little repeat grid with my ellipses and now we have some little password dots there. They're not the greatest input fields of all time, but am I trying to make them the greatest input fields of all time? No, I'm trying to do all of this very, very quickly. Ooh, let's just lock our shape there. I wanna take these three elements, I wanna group them together, I think. Or maybe not, we'll just keep them right there. And we're gonna move them up into place, okay? So everything's still lining up on our grid, so far so good. Maybe we wanna bring this down a little bit and we wanna bring this up. Okay, now we might run out of time. We literally might run out of time. So um, with this, I'm gonna do a prototype first and then if we have time, I'm gonna come back and create the other states. But you get the idea. We would have to then also create a sign up, which I mean, we could just do like really, really fast. We don't even have to do anything special. We could be like, we could do something like this, like uh, sign up like that. And uh, we could just change the button here, sign up. And uh, we could probably make this donut a little smaller, something like that. And we could push these up here and we could do like an extra password field, like confirm password. That That's how easy it could be. That's how easy it could be. I'm just saying, it, it, it could be more complex than that, but for the sake of time, we might just do something like that, okay? Sound good? All right, so we have a sign in and a sign up. Let's rename that artboard sign up. And let's do a little bit of prototyping work here. Okay, now, um, we could do this using, just completely using states. It's a little bit more time consuming. That's totally possible. Um, and if you're not used to using states, uh, components and component states, then it might get a little bit confusing to you. So um, I'm gonna do it on artboards, but just know that you can do this in Adobe XD using states, and that's actually a little bit more of the slick way to do it. I'm gonna do it a little bit more the old school gangster way. Is that is that okay? Are we all okay with that? Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do is we have sign in, and, and we're gonna have to name this button, okay? Button dash, We'll just button sign in like that, okay? And we're gonna have to sign in. Um, I think I think what we're gonna wanna do is, yeah, let's just take all these buttons and the forget password. I'm gonna group them together and call this, I don't know, let's call it controls, okay? Controls. Now, I'm gonna take all of these elements and I'm gonna name these uh, sign in, 
uh, sign in. Oh no, let's call these inputs. Let's call these inputs. Okay, so you have controls and you have inputs. And for the most part, everything else is the same. I have the same donut. I have the same everything. I have the same text. There's two other elements I don't have, which are the arrow and, uh, and this little guy right here, this little background thing. So let's unlock these elements and let's bring them over to our other deal here. Now, we have a background color, our path, and our arrow. Let's make sure we have a similar thing. Background, path, and arrow. We wanna keep them in the same stack in the layers panel. That's important, because otherwise you're gonna get some glitchiness. Well, this doesn't look right over here on our starting uh, screen, but that's okay. We we know that's gonna happen. So we're gonna bring this out off the artboard a little bit and bring the opacity down, right? And we're gonna bring this thing down and do the same thing, okay? We're also gonna take we're gonna share the different elements, like the controls. I want these over here, okay? I just wanna bring them down, and I wanna bring the opacity down. And with this one, the inputs, I want to make sure they're on my first screen so that we can animate from one to the other, right? That's what we're really going here, like going for here. I wanna push these to, whoa, I just want the inputs. I'm gonna push them maybe over to the side, okay? and bring them down. Again, you can do all this in component states and it could totally work, but we have controls and inputs over here and we have controls and inputs in that same order. Everything should be in a similar order. Let's see if we can get a little bit of animation going here. We're gonna go to our prototype screen. We're gonna click on sign in and we're just gonna head over there. Let's click over here on sign up. Not that we want that. We're not gonna work on that proto or that animation right now. But once we go to the sign in, we wanna be able to go back and we wanna be able to auto animate in between the two. So let's go over to sign in and let's say on tap, we want to auto animate to the sign in. Let's do a little bit of snappiness at 0.3 seconds and we're gonna get the same thing. We're gonna auto animate to the starting artboard, a little bit of snappiness, 0.3 seconds. Let's come over here and put our little house there. So that's the start of our prototype. I'm gonna run it, see how badly it fails, and then answer your questions and fix it, okay? So now we have our prototype up. We should be able to hover over sign up. When we click it, oh, things are not looking good for us. And we're gonna figure out why here in a second, okay? That was ugly. All right. So we have our controls. Let's see, let's see. I'm probably thinking it's a layers issue, right? So you have controls, inputs, and you have all of these elements. Forgot password. Oh, what happened? What happened? No, no, no. Controls? That's probably what happened. So we had some weird things. Let's get rid of that. Controls should have everything in it. Oh man, somebody tell me what I'm doing wrong out there if you know. Everything seems to be in the same order. Let's try again. I'm gonna go back to prototype. I'm gonna do sign in, tap, auto animate to the sign in. And when I tap back here, it's gonna go back to the starting artboard. Let's try it again. Do we get something right here? There it is, hello. There's a little bit of auto animate. Man, I was almost like, oh, what on earth am I doing? Now, let's, let's take a look at what's happening, right? The same donut, it's named the same, it's the same element, it's expanding. Our little hello message, it's moving. Our buttons and our controls here for sign up and sign out and forgot password, they're sliding down. Our white element is sliding up. And then our, our input fields are sliding over from the left-hand side. If we wanna see this a little bit more clearly, we can slow it down. Let's go one whole second and let's go one whole second. Let's see our, our prototype a little bit slower, ready? See the animation that's happening there? And we don't like it this slow, but maybe 0.3 seconds was a little too fast actually. So maybe we need to go to like 0.6 seconds and 0.6 seconds. We're just changing a little bit of the timing. Let's run it again and see if our prototype works. Whoop, nice and easy. I like it, it's chill, it's nice, I'm, I'm into it. You know, it goes up, it goes down, I'm digging it. The only thing I might change is the fact that these controls are in front of our path and our inputs and all that stuff. So we might wanna change just some of the layers there, but for the most part, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's see, let's see. Who's asking questions? I wasn't able to get on DC. Oh, oh so people are talking about DC fandom. I'm, okay, that's cool. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Any questions? 
Uh, I'm seeing something. Can you replace Photoshop with this for things like web interfaces, banners, etc.? Absolutely. You should be doing most web design, UI design in something like XD or Figma or Sketch. You should not be using Photoshop for that, in my opinion. That's that's like super duper 10 years ago kind of deal. So um, use the right tool for the job. This would be the right tool for more digital design aspects. Okay. Um, let's see. Script T says, I'm confused about the purpose for this still. I mean, can you export this as the final project or is this just used to show someone what you want them to do? This is still just design software. This is not a no code tool, although there are some great plugins like Anima and some other things that can create websites out of this. Uh, if you want to create a, an actual application, like a mobile application out of this, you could use something like Bravo um, or you could use something like Supernova Studio if you're using Sketch, but this is a design program from here that's actually a great idea let's just take a look what time is it how long we've been going about we're about at time for our design work so let's just answer a few of these questions really quick what would i do with this design i have a color palette i have typography i have assets on the screen that need to be downloaded i have interactions that i need people to see like how this works right clicking in and out of things the animation how would i hand this off to a client how would i hand this off to a developer well i could go up to the share tab here and I could decide how I wanna share this file. Do I want a design review? Is it for developers? Is it for presentation? Let's go development and let's say anyone with the link can do that and they can export the assets and this is for iOS. So let's go ahead and create the link. Adobe XD is gonna create uh, an interactive kind of like a, a prototype mode or, or development area. Um, so that we can share these with our developers and they can get everything they need to start building the project because that's still a thing. You still have to build the project and code, but something like this, when I click on the link is going to make it that much easier. Okay. So let's just go to our link. It loads it up in our browser and we have the same interaction that was there before we could preview it, but we can also open up our dev mode. What's this going to give us? It's going to give us all the hex values to the uh, to like the project. It's going to give us assets that we can download in different files and formats. It shows us the viewport size. It gives us all of the character styles. It tells us where the interactions are and what they are. If I tap on it, we can see like a little bit more about the interaction. It's just it, it's it's creating a handoff procedure um, for you and your team. If I was going to hand this off to a client, I would export you know, I would definitely export these and I would use maybe something like Adobe Dimension or I would use something like Artboard Studio or I would use maybe a plugin inside of XD called Angle and I would uh, like add some mockups in here and like apply these like mockups to a phone so I can like frame them out and make them look really beautiful so I can send these designs along. This is just presentational stuff. You do still have to do the hard work of building it, all right? Uh, what the inside of the app would look like in your imagination. In my imagination, uh, I'm imagining like a, uh, a screen um, that, and I have to do this really quick because I don't have time, but I'm imagining like a really nice white bright interface like this with uh, like different donuts and um, like all with like some information inside of them, like like maybe like this, and we would take like the pink from the donut and we would hook it onto the card and we would get rid of this stuff. And I'm thinking something like this, we would put some text inside that had the name here and the price and the ability to buy it, right? And then I would go like this and I would repeat grid these. So there's lots of them and each of these would have different colors with our different donuts from over here and then I'd probably take these and do like a horizontal scroll group so that when I prototype this thing I could scroll through them all that'd be super nice and with down here I'd get rid of all of these and I'd probably do like individual donuts going down in some sort of like I don't know like a, a vertical way with a bunch of text next to them and so you could scroll through all of those as well that'd be kind of cool so I don't know it might be something like that <laughs> <laughs> that was the most random. I'd do a horizontal scroll group for it. So look, I could go like this. Look, there's some donuts and here's some donuts and has info. So that's real janky, uh, like off the top of my head of what the app might look like, but that's the thing. So, um, okay, very cool. Is it necessary to have the same layers to use the auto animate? Yes, you gotta have the same layers. They gotta be the same name. They gotta be the same thing. Whether it's an image, don't change it to a path. 
if it's a button, it's got to stay a button, the whole deal. And then they, they have to be, it helps if they're in the same stack in the layers panel. That way, XD is not trying to auto animate things from screen to screen and then change the, the layer like stack. That's real funky. You're going to get weird clipping and things like that. So um, very cool. I saw that you had conducted the XD Daily Creative Challenge. Nice. Thank you very much. I do a few of them and I'm actually posting another one next week. So if you want to get lots of stuff like this every day for Monday through Friday for two weeks, you can join in, participate in that. It'd be really, really cool. Um, okay, with that being said, if you have any questions, please ask them. But now's the time, the part of the stream after 30 minutes of designing, we're gonna move over and we're gonna do some portfolio reviews. I got four portfolios or four domains or URLs that were submitted to me in, in Instagram and on Twitter. And I took the first four that were submitted. The first one is from Corrine Simon. Corrine, if you're in the house, if you're it, just just throw us a little emoji and be like, that's me, that's my stuff. If not, maybe we'll catch you on the flip side. But Corrine Simon is a product designer um, and a pretty simple portfolio here. Get straight to the work. Got a nice little picture there, a little explanation of who you are and what you do, and then contact form. What else do you need really besides that? Um, I tell you, I might want uh, this to be spiced up. So portfolios, I, I always have to think about in two kind of ways. Number one, we're gonna have to take a look at the work. How's the work? And then number two, what's your claim as a designer? It says you're a product designer. So far that claim seems legit because what I see are digital products. I see iOS or Android applications, mobile applications down below. But also what's your purpose? What is the purpose of this portfolio? Are you trying to land a job? Are you trying to work free freelancing at clients? Are you trying to get hired at a big corporation or company? So what you put in there also needs to it needs to make sense for the presentation, okay, of your portfolio. So let's just see, I'm located in New York, six years of experience, uh, okay, I find value, makes difference, keeping them, uh, yeah, but nothing about what you're looking for. Are you currently looking for work? I don't know, this is an important thing, because if I'm sending my portfolio to people, I wanna send it to the exact people that are most likely to give me work, whether that's a hire, getting hired for a job or getting a new client. So I wanna know that, Kareen Simon, about you, because the work looks good so far, um, I'm going to be really honest, a little dull on the top section. I might modernize this, step this up, step the game up a little bit and do something a little spicier. But hey, that's just personal preference. I'm going to go to this one. This one catches my eye. You know why this one catches my eye more than the other two? And maybe this is personal preference or maybe you guys in the chat have something to say about this. Um, because it has, it's been placed in a much more believable real world mock-up, right? We see the phone on the table. It's obviously something that has to do with food and it's on like a beautiful granite countertop with food around it. It looks more real. Now I have this other one. I don't, it's hard to tell what's going on back here. Is this a wine bar? Is it a brewery? Is it a business meeting? I'm not sure. This just looks more realistic and it draws my eye. This just has flat color and that's nice for a dribble shot, but this looks a little bit more like a case study. So I'm going to click into this one. Basket, improving online grocery shopping. Okay, and I love this. Once you get here, this is so money. Do we, everybody see how big and beautiful and bold this money shot is? This mock-up is gorgeous. It It's everything you wanna see when you first click on a case study. I need to create, like improve my case studies to look a little bit more like this, but it's way better. And these little teeny tiny shots, they're not really doing as much as this is doing. So I'd figure out a way, Kareen, to do a little bit more with this. Your overview and your role, really, really good. A good case study always starts out with a problem statement for sure. Hypothesis. Now here's where, in my opinion, things go wrong. And you can go back on my channel and watch an interview that I did with Jonathan Courtney from AJ and Smart. Super smart dude. Just wrote a couple of new books. Great courses for sale if you want to go check him out. He's a friend of mine. I like him. Love him a lot. But here's something that he brought up in that interview that blew my mind, and you should watch it too, which is, yes, we wanna know about your process. Yes, we wanna know about the problem. Yes, we wanna know, but is it, if this is a real world project, and I'm not sure if it is, is it a concept project? I don't know. If it's a real world project, I wanna know how this actually improved revenue or traffic or leads for this company. Did, did this work make this company more money? Because if I'm hiring, whether I'm hiring a freelancer or I'm hiring somebody to join my company, I want to know how much value you bring, right? This is the difference when people ask, hey, everybody pay attention here for a second. I'm about to get real, real serious. This is the difference when, when people go, how, how, how does that person charge $10,000 for a logo? And how does this person charge $1,000 for a logo? How does that person get $30,000 for a website? And this person's scraping by to do an entire WordPress site for three grand. How is that possible? 
It's not necessarily because of the visual design. It's not necessarily because of the work itself. It's because of what the work provides. What value do you and me provide as creatives? It can't just be flashy, pretty stuff because there's a million other people on Dribbble that do that, right? It has to be, I took the time and I was a diagnostic technician of your company, your business, your problem, and my goal is to make you more revenue, make you more popular, get you more traffic, increase your leads, all of those things, those speak to businesses more than I can make you a really slick interface. They don't care whether it's pink, orange, or non-existent. Is it making them money? Okay. And so we want to know, is it making us money? So with that being said, I love the problem statement, the overview. I'm sure Corinne's going to get into the work right now, but I really implore you. I encourage you put some stats uh, along with this beautiful money shot of, of the work, say, increased profit by 10% in the first quarter of 2020, right? Increased revenue or or in, even if it's just one just one portion of a user journey, uh, reduced drop off in the shopping cart experience by 10%. People will look at that and go, holy cow. Now, here's what this means. The UX designers are not just visual designers, right? UX designers also care about numbers and statistics, and they care about actually making the experience good for a user. When the experience is good, the business improves, revenue goes up, you get more work, everybody's happy. So put some numbers in here and some details on what this did for your client and for the company. See, hypothesis is good. Your process, the affinity map is good. Comparison, comparative analysis. You did user personas. I love all of it. Solutions, user flow, paper prototypes, wireframes, side note. Visually, I'd like to see this branded out a little bit more to the client. Just a little bit more branding out, I think uh, would, would help it, okay? Um, let's see, design. See, this is beautiful. This visual representation of the design. She's doing a great job of using mixed media here. Hand-drawn stuff, um, things to read, things to look at. I love it. Beautiful shot. I'm getting lots of screens. Next steps, I would do another uh, road to usability test, blah, 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 blah. Lots of stuff, next steps. So I'm thinking that this is probably a concept project, which isn't bad. But if you can get yourself to be in a real world situation, make sure you put those numbers up. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's good. Kareen, I like it. What if I hit uh, contact? Where does it take me? Right. It goes to your contact section. Really easy. She also has a nice picture of her smiling. She's very approachable, very friendly looking. This is a great, this is great. I would just say maybe modernize this and build out some of these case studies to look a little bit more like this, with a little bit more pizzazz when it comes to the numbers and the things that businesses want to see. Hi, Jesse. Uh, Elizabeth A says in the chat, how would you approach the stats if it's just a concept project? That's tough. That's really, really tough. What I would actually do is create a concept project that just recently went through a similar redesign, right? I would find, I don't know, maybe this one that she just did, the, the basket grocery shopping app. Maybe you could find a similar application that just did a redesign and they have their own case study that said when they improved this user flow, revenue went up by X amount. So you are mimicking the good work that people have already done. You're not copying, but you're saying, obviously there's something here to it. And I want to take another app that's suffering from this and I want to do a similar process and figure out all the little nuances of this other app. So app A, did it and increased revenue and their stats and everything. I'm going to take app B who hasn't done it yet. And I'm going to do a concept project based off that. So this is not you coming up with work off the top of your head out of thin air. This is you taking another one out there that needs to be modernized, fixed and improved and doing the work, right? So that's, that's how I would approach that. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. Professor says I'm learning UI UX design, but I think I'm not making progress. I think I'm not motivated. Can I become only a UI designer? You totally can. Is there as much value in you just being a UI designer? No, not as much, but there's plenty of companies out there who are looking for people to come in and grind out and be a UI designer. You're not gonna have as much ownership of the product. You're not gonna be able to be a product designer if all you wanna do is visuals. Product designers are what are really in need right now. Stay tuned, I might might, might be coming out with a course on how to become a product designer in 2020, um, or maybe 2021, depending on when the course comes out. But stay tuned for that. Elizabeth says, a great suggestion. Thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate your encouragement. Let's see. Let's move on to the next portfolio of the day. We got to cruise out of this because we got like five minutes left. This is Sagar, a graphic and UI UX designer based in Madrid. You help companies bridge the, I'm a, that says gap. And I just pulled on this text and it angered me so much because that text is not actual text. That text is an image. Why? Why? This is text. 
Why is this not text? I don't understand. As a front-end developer, that just frustrates me. Side note. Okay. Uh, latest project. Okay. Instagram places. Let's read the case study. Let's get into it. So far, I'm not a big fan of the presentation of this portfolio. And you have your case studies uh, over here on Medium. I'm not opposed to that. Nice and big, beautiful overview. The problem, the solution. This is all good. I mean, really, I, I, I actually, I like the design of some of the stuff you're doing here. The presentational elements are nice. Um, I'm not opposed to you doing a case study on Medium. Actually, a lot of really, really talented designers do their case studies on Medium, and it can be a great thing. It's just not as impressive, honestly, and there's some limitations there for how you can brand it and make it your own. I think you're doing a good job of it. Um, I just think, you know, it's a it's a little bit of t something like Medium. It very much feels like a blog post, so you might want to have at the top like a too long don't read section. I'm gonna be really honest because I start I start scrolling, I start getting exhausted with how long this is. Case studies tend to suffer from this just in general, so maybe that's a good thing to bring up. If you have a case study, maybe you want to consider a too long don't read section. Like, what are the, what are the basic details of this? Right? This is the role you played. This is the improved statistics of the project. Here's the great money shots. And here is the thing you learned most and what you want to do next with it. Maybe that's your too long don't read section. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. I'm thinking off the top of my head. Um, okay. Uh, with that being said, I dig what you're doing here. Let's move on to the next one. This is in super. This is actually a, an agency website um, that was submitted. Tutive, minimalistic and ahead of the time. We craft applicable UI UX that reflects your business values. Functional, simple, human-centered products. Please scroll down. Okay, I'm scrolling down. So far, there's zero, I mean, it's very minimal. It's very modern, so much so that there's no visuals anywhere. I mean, anywhere. Finally, we got an image. I would say dancing on the line of too minimalistic, right? Up here, we have a video, which is kind of cool. It's great. I mean, it brings a little bit of spice, a little bit of pizzazz. I'm guessing these are the members of this creative agency, this digital team. Kind of cool. Um, it's just, it's a little blah for me. I'm, I'm just saying, I want to be really, really honest. I bet you the work is probably fantastic. I'm going to check out the latest projects here. Let's go over to work. We streamline complex processes. Um, okay. Again, here's, here's a problem I'm having. You're making minimalistic websites and products for people, but the homepage looks exactly like the work page. Like, Here's home, here's work, and I scroll down, I have the exact same things. You're not offering anything new to me. Why did I even come to this, this project page, right? Is it any different? So now we have to visit, I, I would have figured I would have visited the project like that anyways by clicking on the home page. A little confusing to me, okay? Maybe it could, a, a little bit of a better user journey could happen. There's video embedded in each of these projects, which is cool. Um, I'm not sure what it has to do. Did you do the video? Or are you using it as part of the case study? What so far nothing here says design. It just says video editing. So is that a service that you offered? I don't know. I'm confused. Consulting, responsive web design, photo and video production. Okay, so you did that. Okay, so I should I should have read that little thing, but it's really small. Okay. Um again, super minimal, super modern, not opposed to it, but the presentation of this, I'm gonna not gonna lie, is not the best. Um it's just a little, it's just a little lackluster. And I think that there's a way to do minimal without it being like, without it going over the side to bland. So that's what I would say. I think the work is really minimal and nice. I'm just wondering again, like what value are you offering? How does this differ from all the other people who are doing clean, minimal design? I'm just wondering. Those are my thoughts on it. I, I think the website is a little confusing. Um, this page looks a little bit different because the background of the header isn't black. But again, it just feels like I, there's, 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 oh, it's a very fine line between white space and clean and modern. And then like it didn't hit the mark. You know, it's a hard thing to verbalize, but I'm going to stop there. I think it's a really good attempt. I think the work's good. I'm sure you guys are crushing it. I hope you guys are crushing it. I, I wish the best for you guys. Keep doing the thing that you love. Don't deviate from what you love. If you like doing clean, modern stuff, stay there, do that thing. But I'm just saying, think, think about it. Think, think about how we can take it next level. Okay. Uh, oh, Corrine Simon's in the house. We reviewed hers. Uh, really helpful feedback. Great. Thanks for sharing. We learned a lot from the feedback, Brian says. We did. We learned a lot. I think you're doing a great job, Kareen. I think everybody here is doing a great job. This is going to have to be the last one, and this is from Moritz Kindler, uh, web design enthusiast. Interesting tagline. I would like just one of these people to say right at the very top, I'm so-and-so. I'm looking for this. I love to do that. And something kind of funny about your personality. Like, I'm Moritz Kindler. 
I love making websites for nonprofits and educational institutions. I eat pizza in the morning and I have fun while I'm doing it. I don't know, just something that's a little bit spicier, something that's a little bit more you, you know, because there's just so many portfolios out there. You guys, there's so many portfolios out there. You have to stand out. Your copy has to stand out. Your presentation has to stand out. Your your designs and your work has to be really specific to what you're looking for. It's You just can't do general niche stuff or generalistic stuff anymore and go, look, I made a website. I'm an enthusiast. Here's another thing over here. Here's a dribble shot. Here's a case study that doesn't say what it did. You just can't do it anymore. It has to be very niche down. Like there's another video on my channel you should watch. Um, and you don't have to watch as much as go just look up her stuff, but Sarah Dunn, who uh, she does wedding, SEO for the wedding industry specifically. I did a whole video with her about niching down. You don't have to go as hardcore as she does, but there's something to it about being a little bit more specific about who you are, what you love, and what you wanna do. Guys, pursue those things. Don't try to be everything to everybody. You'll never ever succeed. Be something to somebody, that's better. Okay, um, let's scroll down and just see a little bit more. I've got some projects here. Uh, I'm not a fan of how quick that that moved on me. I was kind of looking at it. So I would take the automatic movement out of that. That really frustrated me. The case study, minimalist workspaces. Okay, let's let's look at the case study. Let's check it out. Uh, concept design development. That's the roles you played. Okay, the problem, they're all good. Again, he, here's the problem. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe this is broken. We gotta fix that up. The, it, all of this is good. And it's like, I feel like five years ago, if you had a case study like this, everyone would have been like, wow, you are ahead of the game. But it needs to be more now. I need a big hero image here. I need your copy. It can't just be so so vanilla and descriptive. You have to weave the brand tone of the brand you just worked on as well as your brand tone into everything. Copy, have we talked about this? Copywriting is one of the hidden talents of a creative person. I know you're like, but I like making visual stuff. You've got to learn a little bit about how to write and how to write in an exciting way. It's it just, it's going to be better. It keeps people interested, okay? You know the difference between a good blog and a bad blog. You've read a bad blog before, haven't you? It just stops you in your tracks. Unless it's something you're really passionate about, you're not going to read it. But what if there was 500 other blogs that were written more interesting about the same topic? Am I staying here on this blog post? Am I staying here on this case study? The copy's a little bland. It's a little small. It's hard to read. Not a lot of great imagery. The presentation has to be there, folks. We got to do it. And I'm doing all of this in love. I wanna let you know that when I say this, I'm not speaking from a place of perfection. My website right now, if you, let's go look at it. My website right now is not geared towards taking clients, so I don't feature the work a lot, right? I feature a little bit more about who I am and being able to watch my content and see the things that I make online and then just a couple shots of work. But again, I'm not looking for a job. I'm not trying to get hired by anybody. So that's that's my thing is I'm a, I'm able to do that. This is more of a a person focused website, right? If you're looking for work, it's got to be more than this. It has to be. Side note, sign up for my newsletter on my website right there if you want to get more details and information like this from me. Hey, that is pretty much it for the day, folks. Thanks so much for taking the time and watching the stream. Uh, I'm gonna answer a couple questions before we go. Uh, can you make a video on creativity and originality? That's a good video topic. I might be able to do something like that. That sounds like a great topic. I'll, I'll definitely put it uh, in the list. I have a huge list of content that I'm planning on making. Uh, Arion S says, how did I do that Zoom thing? This one right here where I, I take my mouse and I zoom in on stuff. Inside of my Mac, uh, my MacBook Pro, there's the accessibility features. You can turn that on. I hold down command and I zoom in. It allows me to do that for my screen sharing, which is pretty cool. Hey, uh, thanks from InSuper. Hey, Edmir, great work. Love it. Thanks, thanks for submitting the work and I hope the feedback was helpful. I hope it helped you in, in some way. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, and excellence, I think, put a nail in the coffin, which is that your site has to be suited for people that will come across your site. It has to be specific. It can't be generic anymore. Make it specific. The more specific you go, the better it's gonna be. So uh, meet me back here next Saturday for another live stream. We'll be doing some more live design, some more live reviews, submit your work, and maybe we should even do a game and some sort of competition. That would be fun. I like it. Um, hey, stay tuned. If you sign up for my newsletter, here's what I'll do. I'll send out a little newsletter to let you know 
uh, what the game is going to be. You can participate it throughout, uh, participate in it throughout the week, and then maybe we can look at the submissions for the game for the competition next Saturday. It'd be tons of fun. I'll get I'll get back to you guys soon. But hey, have a fantastic weekend. And just when you're thinking about all of this creativity, originality, niching down, being successful, finding clients, make sure you're finding some time to just be still and be quiet and rest and be healthy people. Make sure you're doing that as long as staying, as well as staying safe, staying indoors and doing everything you need to do. Uh, hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me on the live stream. Take care.